religion is undeniably a contentious subject within the Warhammer 40,000 universe, and the reasons behind this contention are quite understandable. We are presented with two stark examples of faith and belief, each carrying heavy negative connotations. On one side, we confront the powers of chaos and its four dark gods, leading adherents down a dark and repugnant path. On the opposing end, we encounter the dogmatic and oppressive imperial cult, which subjects its followers to brutalization and exploitation. These two manifestations of belief represent opposing facets of the same coin, each with its own set of implications. However, today, I aim to advocate for the necessity of religion and its potential positive influence, particularly within the Imperium. I propose that religion could have served as a potent tool in the hands of the Emperor of Mankind, had he chosen to utilize it for the betterment of humanity. The Dark Age of Technology stands as humanity's heyday, an absolute golden age marked by significant technological advancements across all fields. This era witnessed the overwhelming expansion and colonization of thousands upon thousands of worlds throughout the entire galaxy. However, this pinnacle came to an end with the cybernetic revolt, as humanity's greatest creation, the Men of Iron, turned against their masters, ushering in a bitter conclusion to humanity's dominance across the stars. The reason for delving into the Dark Age of Technology is to highlight that during this period, humanity wasn't notably religious. While our knowledge about this era in mankind's history is limited, I argue the opposite. Unbridled use and development of technology often coincide with atheistic views on the nature of reality. As we observe a significant resurgence of new belief systems and faiths during the Age of Strife, especially those partially associated with the Chaos Gods, such as the Faith dominating the Primarch Lorgar Aurelian's homeworld of Colchis, it becomes apparent that religious views might have been considered outdated or even barbaric by humanity at that time, generally speaking. These views could have clashed with the relentless technological progress that humans were experiencing. In a society dominated by logic, there seems to be little room for faith and religious beliefs. After all, how much space can there be for the metaphysical and spiritual when a society is completely immersed in the pursuit of logic and technological advancements? The aftermath of the cybernetic revolt bore catastrophic consequences, casting a dark shadow upon humanity's reliance on technology. Virtually all the technological foundations upon which humanity had depended were either rendered useless or turned actively hostile towards its creators. Yet even in the face of such a harrowing situation, the indomitable spirit of mankind refused to be wholly extinguished. While the remnants of humanity's once galactic empire grappled with the arduous task of rebuilding and overcoming the setbacks imposed by the cybernetic revolt, a far graver event unfolded, forever altering the cosmic landscape and transforming the very essence of the Sea of Souls. The Eldari, a race that had thrived for millions upon millions of years, found themselves mired in a profound moral and societal decay. The absence of challenges to their society led to a gradual yet inexorable decline into absolute depravity. A pervasive lack of a unifying sense of meaning and purpose among the Eldari resulted in the rise of worship centered around desire and self-indulgence. Indulgence itself evolved into their highest and most significant vice, where even the lives and safety of the Eldari species became commodities to be used and bargained with. This culmination of negative habits spawned frequent episodes of drug use, sadism, and perversions of every conceivable kind. The consequences of such actions by the Eldari, the most psychically powerful species in the galaxy, reverberated across the cosmos for possibly millions of years, 
becoming the impetus for one of the most crucial events in the entire history of the galaxy, second only to the War in Heaven. This galaxy-breaking event was the fall of the Eldari, a moment also known as the birth of She Who Thirsts. Through this catastrophic event emerged Slanesh, the fourth Chaos God, casting the galaxy into the depths of Hell itself. The ripples of horror and chaos unleashed by the Eldari's descent into darkness echoed across the cosmos, leaving an enduring mark on the fate of all sentient beings. In the wake of the cybernetic revolt, humanity found itself confronting not only the ruins of its own creation, but also the looming specter of the Eldari's fall from grace. As the galaxy trembled on the brink of oblivion, the denizens of the cosmos were left to grapple with the consequences of their own depraved hubris and the malevolent forces that lurked within the void, waiting to consume all in their path. Despite losing much of its technological base, which heavily relied on artificial intelligence, humanity's destruction wasn't assured. The spirit of advancement persisted, promising the creation of new technologies to confront emerging challenges. Humanity could endure, even thrive, were it not for the aftermath of the cybernetic revolt. The birth of Slanesh altered everything irreversibly. Not only did it plunge the Sea of Souls into a maelstrom of warp storms and chaotic fury, but it also inflicted severe consequences upon real space. The creation of the Eye of Terror tore the veil between chaos and the material realm, ushering the Empyrean into the tangible world. While humanity had long traversed the warp for colonization and even commerce, the post slanish era marked a significant shift. Psychers emerged more frequently and wielded greater power, mutations proliferated, and demonic incursions became commonplace. It seemed as though the other Chaos Gods awaited the birth of Slanesh to commence their wicked games. The upheaval in the Empyrean rendered warp travel impossible. Colossal warp storms consumed any vessel daring to traverse them. Consequently, systems reliant on such trade networks collapsed. Entire regions succumbed to famine, strife and madness, regressing humanity to its most primal state. This regression also sparked the resurgence of religion and superstition. Psychically gifted individuals faced brutal persecution as witches, blamed for summoning the perils of the warp merely by existing. These catastrophic developments scarred humanity forevermore. From the ruins of Old Night emerged a hero, the Emperor of Mankind, bearing the promise of restoring humanity's dominion among the stars. He waged a mighty war against entrenched chaos and superstition, striving to resurrect the Grand Order and enlightened society of old. To his credit, he came close to achieving his vision. Yet with hindsight, we realize that his endeavors were doomed from the outset. A society founded on a lie, the imperial truth, was destined to implode. Nevertheless, the Imperium of Man represented a valiant effort to reclaim humanity's strength, albeit through brutal and barbaric methods. In my view, Scattered as mankind was, unity, however flawed, offered the best chance for survival in a vastly transformed galaxy. Unity was the right concept, and my critique lies not in that notion. Rather, it is the squandering of these efforts, perhaps due to underlying arrogance or a failure to grasp the intricacies of the Empyrean and human nature itself. In the 41st millennium, we recognize the indispensable role of the cult imperialis in safeguarding humanity's existence. Without its stern laws and regulations, mankind would falter. The pervasive and insidious influence of chaotic corruption underscores the necessity of such measures. This regression to dogma mirrors humanity's ordeal during the Age of Strife, a collapse of the very principles upon which the Imperium was erected. In his quest to liberate humanity from dogma and religion, the Emperor inadvertently sealed its fate, 
a fate wherein the heretical words of his son, Lorga Aurelian, became revered as divine truth, a damning testament to his own supposed divinity. You might wonder how these insights could serve humanity's interests. The crux, I believe, lies in understanding the profound potency of faith within the Warhammer 40k universe. The Chaos Gods draw power from two primary sources. Firstly, they feed off the deeds of psychically active souls, amplifying their essence. Corn thrives on violence and war, Tsinch on schemes and manipulation, Nurgle on disease and decay, and Slanesh on pleasure and obsession. While this is a simplification, it underscores their domains. However, the other half of the equation lies in direct acts of worship and faith. Such acts, steeped in each Chaos God's particular brand of depravity, serve as potent conduits of power. Faith, dedication, and sacrifice carry significant metaphysical weight in the Empyrean. Blood spilled in Korn's name holds more power than mere violence. The act of worship itself empowers the deity to whom the sacrifices are dedicated. The Emperor was aware of these dynamics, yet chose to dismiss their potential for humanity's benefit. The cost of this negligence proved immense. While ignorance might have shielded mankind from chaos during the Golden Age of Technology, the birth of Slanesh reshaped the dynamics of the Great Game. Chaos became more proactive, empowered by the Empyrean bleeding into reality through the Eye of Terror, enabling easier corruption of real space. The lie known as the Imperial Truth proved insufficient to safeguard humanity. Ignorance could no longer shield against corruption. Magnus the Red's downfall serves as a poignant example. Though possibly warned by the Emperor about the perils of the Sea of Souls, Magnus failed to grasp its true magnitude. His sacrifice of an eye for knowledge marked his descent into Zinch's clutches, with almost no hope of changing his fate. Could religion truly have saved the Imperium from the horrors of the Horus heresy? I firmly believe it could have. The Primarchs were an issue on their own. Some argue that their knowledge of chaos would inevitably lead those disillusioned with the Emperor, such as Angron or even Mortarion, to betray the Imperium eventually. However, had the Emperor embraced religion as he should have, humanity would have been far better prepared to confront chaos across the galaxy and within their own souls. This shift could have altered the course of history significantly. Primarchs like Magnus, Lorgar, and perhaps even Horus himself might have remained loyal under different circumstances. Horus's remorse in his final moments, as depicted in The End and The Death Part 3, supports this notion. Embracing a strong belief system could have mitigated many of the underlying issues plaguing us today. The Emperor, unparalleled in his knowledge of warp-related matters, could have devised rituals, litanies, and divine rules to combat chaos effectively. Understanding the perils of the Empyrean would have bolstered humanity's survival, particularly if the Emperor were incapacitated and unable to lead directly. Let us not underestimate the power of faith. It manifests in miraculous ways. Ironically, the most potent weapon against chaos in the 41st millennium was forged by a Chaos Undivided Worshipper, rejected by the very God Emperor worshipped by his followers. And that concludes this video. First, I would like to ask you all to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. It is a bit argumentative and more commentary focused than what I usually do, but I truly hope it is indeed enjoyable to all of you. I would like to apologize for the significant delay in launching new content. Some real life stuff came up and I was unable to properly work on my scripts. I'm in a much better position now, so content should flow more frequently. I intend to aim for at least weekly releases, but hopefully I have enough creative juice to release two videos per week. I would also like to ask you guys, what type of content do you prefer? Are these commentary-focused videos more enjoyable? 
or do you prefer the more law-focused and less argumentative ones? Feel free to recommend topics and ideas you would like to have covered. I'm always open to new ideas and opinions. That's it. I hope you guys have an amazing week. Goodbye.